When did you purchase it? I purchased it in the spring of 2020 for the How much did you pay for it? 4,000. So you bought it in March of 2020 for $4,000 and you sold it to the defendant's husband in May of 2020. How much did you sell it to him for? He told me you wanted to- Nope. That's a number. He starts with a letter. How much did you sell it for? 4000 But when you sold it to the defendant's husband for $4,000, he was going to make payments. Correct. What was the down payment? He gave me $500. And what was he supposed to pay periodically? Monthly, weekly? 250 a month. So he bought it in May. Did he make June's payment of 250 he might have, Your Honor. I don't have well, any record of it just because it's a completely different contract that I made with him and her. Not to me. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. At some point, the car was impounded. Miss Cassidy said that when the car was impounded, her husband was only a short amount of funds shy of having paid you. So far, is that correct? That the no, car Your Honor, was he impounded. was making $500 payments to him. Oh, Mr. Colton. Nicole, that's you. What's up, man? Hey, I didn't ask when I handed you today's payment, but we got $500 left, right? And you responded, yep. I'll bring the title next week. Mr. Colton, speak. Speak. I don't know what to say, Your Honor. What do you want to say? You want to say I made a mistake? Because I made a mistake, but... Clearly, I made a mistake. So he owed you a balance of $500, and you told him you would bring the title the following week. Then the car got impounded. So, so far, you're owed $500 on this car. Now tell me what the contract was with his wife. I need to get this car out because I got my purse in there medical records from her work. Okay. So can we please meet up today and get it out? So okay. I say, okay, I'll so, draw up a, so, a contract. She had signed the contract. I'd like to see it. Oh. While I'm taking a look at this, Mr. Colton, and I assume that you can tell that I'm not crazy about you because you lied to me first. You lied. So anybody lies to me once, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I don't want to hear it. It can't be as important as what he wants to say. Well, it's part of the conversation. I don't care about a conversation. Well, it has to, was there well, for it the has to be. I don't he care. Had two numbers. You have to understand something. There. I don't care about your conversation. You lied to me once. I don't like you. Because the next thing that you tell me, you're going to tell me with the same look in your eye as you told me that he was making $250 a month payments which was a lie, which you wanted me to believe. And you said it with the same look that you're giving me right now, which is I want you to believe me, what I'm saying. Do you understand? Yes, That's what I do for a living. So, so far, you've got $4,700 for this car that you paid 4000 for. Kevin, I'd like you to take the title over to the plaintiff and have him sign it. Sign it. There you go. Give it to her. Please. Thank you. So, you have a contract with her. And so far, as far as I'm concerned, you've been paid for this car. You've been paid for the car plus $700 for your time and trouble because you didn't make one payment and you had to go down to impound. So the only way that I can void this contract is to find that it's unconscionable, which I find. I find that it is an unconscionable contract because the contract that you had her sign in order to get her medical records, her work product, and her purse out of the car was one that started all over again, the $4,000. People who can lie when they're under oath can also do unconscionable contracts. You sign a contract and you're bound by it, except if the terms of the contract are so unconscionable that it shocks the conscience of the court because you actually took advantage of her. 
She needed to get stuff out of the car. You said you want your things out of the car. You have to sign this that you're going to. We're going to start all over again and completely disregard what your husband paid me on the, for the car already. And that, sir, is unconscionable. Your case is dismissed. We're done.